This is Rangesh. Thank you for giving me the privilege to ask you the question. The last three years or so, uh, I am becoming a follower of Ramana Maharishi. And I, I do the meditations. And I see that oneness for a particular time when I do meditation. But somehow I am not able to prolong it or uh, make it a kind of a life like you have. I do meditation. I am able to completely come out of the indulgence thinking and all of those. And I again I go back to the same indulgence thing like a vengeance with a more rigor what I am supposed to do. That's the question I have. So my position on this is very clear. We are here in a body and any attempt to escape the limitations of the body will only result in the body being even more present and even more challenging when one comes back from that little excursion into so-called freedom. So, what if you were to... Ranganathan is your name? Rangesh. Rangesh. What if you were to keep your meditation being very present, very here and now, really present, really here and now, aware of your actions. And whenever there is an urge to action emerging, which is enunciated, to then ask yourself the question, is this action, is this action that this body is undertaking now, emerging from the ahankar, or is it emerging from the satya, the truth? the truth impulse, the self, you know, the eternal self, which is present within that impulse. Is this action coming from the truth impulse or is it coming from ahankar? And if you ask yourself that question, to start with once every hour, twice every hour, five times, ten times, fifty times, sixty times an hour, as a sadhana, as a practice, after a while, this whole system, it's in samarpan to that truth, yes or no? Yes. It will automatically happen, right? So in that samarpan to the truth, with the eyes open, open eyes, present, aware, no meditation, that is your meditation. That is your meditation. Because you have come here and said you're not able to integrate these two it's a duality in your life on a daily basis. And that duality is there because this body, this body is the place to inhabit. Otherwise you would be a cosmic being, you would be a spirit. You would be an Atma, you're not. You are the body and the Antar Atman is the impulsing center of your system called Rangesh. So, you can take an identity as a Rangesh, no? that's your name. Mm. This thing here has been given a name called Rangesh. When it came out of the mother's body, the astrologer said the name has to start with R. And this is the date of birth, the chart was made. So, Rangesh. So, that is the name given to this thing. So, you can keep that as an identity. And that Rangesh is making these decisions to action based on the truth that is emerging and even if you make a mistake, even if you, for example, don't know the difference between the ahankar and the antar atman, between the ego and the antar guru, the truth within, even if you're not able to discern which is which, it doesn't matter because you are already taking conscious action. You're not saying, I am not this, so whatever this does is okay. I've told that story, that lady who used to come to the satsangs, she was always angry with me and just very rude and nasty and... I mean, I understood her situation and once she even was sitting on the chair and then she was shouting at me like, what is this nonsense you're teaching? And then I said, why are you sitting here? Why are you torturing yourself? And then she said, yeah, but I didn't come here, my body came here. And that is the problem that at one point the person in their conceptual imagines that they are separate from this body and the duality is there 
nice and, and, and brightly staring into your face, shining into your face. So why go into that when you can go this route and then as you bend, as you're more and more in samarpan, the actions emerge from the truth and so your consciousness will expand. It has to, even if you don't want it to expand, it will. It'll just start expanding, you start to be more... more... coherent in your movements, you'll be more aware of your body, you'll be more aware of the emotions, you'll be able to experience them deeper, but not losing, not being the victim, you'll be the master of it, but also able to experience it better. Your, your thinking will become more clear, for sure. These are... this is what living is about, it's about being here and with this system, navigating this thing called living, from moment to moment to moment. So, of course, one can choose that route, but then one goes into enlightenment, because you go further and further away from the body, because you can't stand this world around you. You can't stand the world around you. Isn't that what happens when you go into deep meditation and everything? Yes. Then you come back and then it's, oh, now I have to go to work, I have to talk to people, I have to do this, I have to do that, and you're just miserable as a result. You want to sit in a cave and do it, that's different. Yeah, I have a lady question there. Uh, in, when I'm in the office, in the meetings, there are situations which triggers what is expected of to me to be delivered. There are a few things which is not controllable. Right, so people still want the results to happen. So the, most of the time they raise questions about my ability. And I get this stress sometimes, right? So this sadhana helps me outside, but the, after the meetings I still go through those problems. It's going to only get worse, I'm sorry to say. Only worse. Either you go and sit in a cave for the rest of your life, or you realize that you are an instrument of truth and the more you... so the more you are aware of the... of the truth being your master, the Antar Guru, and you're able to distinguish... No, this action is coming from the Ahankar. Uh, let me go into Samarpanam and let me move with the truth of my being. The more you do that, with your eyes open, in this world, in the marketplace, in the in the job, at that meeting, you will see in one day the difference, because you're present. The more absent you are, the more mistakes you make. You're not sitting in a cave, so why are you doing the practice of the cave? If you're ready to sit in the cave, that's different. Then you sit in the cave, then you can go into cosmic experience. But if you're in this world, and you're meditating the half of the day and miserable the other half, then I think we have a problem of the highest form of duality that exists. And that's not what we want. The non-dual is a holistic state, it's not just a conceptual state. It's a holistic state where the materiality is in total surrender to itself. It's in surrender to itself. Same with the emotional, same with the conceptual, same with the transformative. So, instead of sitting in the cave, going into samadhi states, but realizing that you have to buy food for the evening, so going to work, and then being incapable of being there because the cave state and the samadhi state is what has determined your system where you feel free from the, from the challenges of society, and then have created the biggest duality possible and are generally miserable because of that, why not accept this body as the place to be in? And so the meditation in every moment is to discern between the truth and the ahankara. It does not require a high level of conceptual ability to, to start to discern this and to feel the more you go with the truth, the less suffering in your life. Sure. One more question. In a day, how much time you meditate for us to understand? 
I can say anything. I can tell you I, I meditate for 11 hours. What are you going to do? You're going to meditate for 11 hours? No. I can tell you I don't meditate at all. What are you going to do? Not meditate at all? No. So let's not focus on me, let's focus on you. Look at yourself, what are you capable of and tune into your antaratman. Okay. Start to feel it, start to practice and it will bring a degree of coherence into your life where these two extremes will start to become one. Life is living, is working, is being, is in samarpan, is in surrender, is an instrument of the truth here and now. Thank you.